Hi, David Dodge here. Welcome to the Green Energy Futures Podcast. Green Energy Futures has been covering the clean tech sector in Canada for nine years now, and we've just uncovered one of the biggest untold stories. With thousands of megawatts of solar projects underway, solar is about to explode onto the grid in Alberta, Canada's beleaguered oil province. Solar is now the cheapest way to generate electricity, and Alberta has among the best solar resource in Canada. Dan Balaban is CEO of Greengate Power in Calgary, Alberta, and just one of his current projects is 465 megawatts, enough to power 100,000 homes. There are literally dozens of major solar projects now underway. In our exclusive one-on-one interview, Dan explains why this solar boom is happening and why Alberta is literally the best place in Canada for solar. While Alberta searches for the next big thing, Dan says, here it is, right under our noses, hiding in plain sight. Yeah, so I'm Dan Balaban. I'm uh, co-founder, president, and CEO of Greengate Power. Uh, Greengate Power is a renewable energy company based in Calgary, Alberta. And uh, what we do is uh, we develop renewable energy projects of unprecedented scale. Uh, over the last uh, decade, we've developed a uh, billion dollars of renewable energy projects that are operating uh, in Alberta, um, including the, uh, the country's largest uh, wind energy project. And over the next couple of years, uh, we're hoping to start construction on our next billion dollars of projects, including now a project called Traverse Solar, which will be the largest solar energy project by far in Canada and one of the largest in the world. That's pretty amazing stuff, Dan, especially when you consider you're a small startup who uh, started 10 or 12 years ago uh, in Alberta. It's really uh, quite an amazing story. You successfully developed those early wind projects, though, at a time when it wasn't very easy. What's changed since then? Yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, you know, renewable energy has come a long way in the last uh, several decades. Uh, you know, it's it's you know, it's quite obvious that renewable energy sol- you know, helps solve some of our uh, environmental challenges, uh, you know, specifically climate change. Uh, but um, renewable energy technology has come a really long way. Uh, you know, so, for example, over the last 20 years, solar module costs have come down by 99%. Over the last 10 years, those same solar module costs have come down by 90%. And uh, with that tremendous uh, advancement te- in technology, um, it's allowed renewable energy projects to now compete uh, very favorably with fossil fuels. So we can have our cake and eat it too. We can uh, reduce emissions and help solve some of our really urgent environmental challenges, but also produce the lowest cost power. Solar is now uh, competing for the spot of the cheapest way to build a new project to generate electricity. That's only happened in the last quite very few years. Uh, How cheap is solar these days? Well, the, uh, the IEA, the International Energy Agency, just declared uh, la- late last year solar the new king of energy and uh, declared that you know, solar is now the lowest cost source of electricity that humanity has, uh, has ever seen. Um, and uh, you know, that's, that's a trend that has uh, been going on for a long time. We've just reached the tipping point. You know, when you have uh, continual technological advances and continual cost reductions, it's only a matter of time. Uh, before you reach the tipping point, uh, like I said, we reached the tipping point in the last year or two, and uh, I think the future for solar is very bright, pardon the pun, uh, in, uh, in Alberta and beyond. Well, and uh, that, in fact, bears itself out in the numbers, and I guess if you start looking at the numbers of projects that are in development, and actually the ones that are being built and will most certainly be built, uh, there are some surprising stories there. Uh, how big is that story? Well, I think, it, you know, I think it's a massive story. Uh, you know, I believe uh, over the next decade, we're going to see, you know, billions of dollars of uh, new renewable energy uh, div- uh, construction uh, taking place here in this province at a time where, uh, you know, we need uh, new, new ec- economic activity, you know, diversification. Um, you know, the, o- the overall story here in Alberta is uh, historically uh, we've depended uh, very much on coal power for our electricity needs. Um, with the uh, with the uh, our aging coal fleet, increasing carbon costs, uh, all that coal fire generation needs to be replaced over the next uh, you know, over the coming years, uh, and I believe uh, a big chunk of that will go to renewables and uh, 
specifically solar, given its uh, operating profile and really low costs. And that's not a maybe anymore. We now know, and it's been confirmed by those very coal uh, coal companies, that they are ending the use of coal seven years ahead of schedule in 2023. Yeah, and 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 that's driven by economics. Uh, you know, coal, uh, you know, older coal, uh, coal units are expensive to operate. We have uh, rising carbon pricing uh, in Alberta and Canada, and it's really economics that are that are driving that uh, that early change. But it's uh, sure is a great story for the environment. How much solar is out there uh, about to be developed or contemplating development? I mean, there's, uh, you know, there's thousands of megawatts uh, of solar that are currently planned. You know, that translates into, you know, billions of dollars of uh, potential projects and potential investment uh, in this province. Um, but, you know, uh, it's unlikely that every uh, planned project will be built. Uh, you know, development is a very complex and, uh, and risky process. I mean, that's really what we do at Greengate is, uh, you know, we, we've been historically very good at, uh, at managing that process and turning an idea for a renewable energy project into, you know, uh, iron in the ground, you know, producing, uh, producing energy. Um, but, uh, you know, I do believe with the, you know, with costs continuing to come down, technology continue to improve our growing need for power here in, in the province, uh, you know, we will see, you know, quite a number of, uh, projects go ahead, but uh, those can, years ahead. Those conditions that, uh, make it favorable for that kind of development here in Alberta for solar development, uh, are pretty optimal right now. And in fact, there are lots of big projects, uh, go actually going ahead. We know are going ahead and, uh, you know, all about this firsthand. Tell me about that. Yeah, so, um, you know, it's very well known that Alberta's got phenomenal fossil fuel resources, but we also have some phenomenal uh, renewable energy resources as well. You know, it's, as it relates to solar, uh, we're the sunshine state of the north. Our solar resource in Alberta is as good as the solar resource in Florida uh, for the purposes of producing uh, electricity from, from the sun. And, um, you know, solar tends to produce, um, well, I mean, not tends to produce, it does produce during the day. Uh, doesn't produce at night, uh, but uh, solar produces during the day when we need the power the most, uh, when prices tend to be the highest. So, uh, you know, it's a very attractive uh, technology to be, be deployed uh, here in Alberta to meet uh, our growing power needs and our growing needs to uh, reduce our carbon footprint and also diversify our economy. You have an unprecedented solar project going ahead, unprecedented in terms of scale and value. Uh, tell me about that. Yeah, so we uh, are working on a project called Traverse Solar. It's a uh, 465 megawatt, about $700 million uh, solar project uh, being developed um, uh, in southern Alberta, um, about an hour and a half, uh, half uh, south of Calgary. Uh, you know, it's a project that uh, will consist of uh, about one and a half million solar panels uh, spread across the landscape and produce energy for uh, more than 100,000 uh, Alberta homes, emissions-free energy for more than 100,000 Alberta homes. Uh, you know, it's a project that's going to uh, employ more than 500 people during the height of construction. It's going to contribute, you know, approximately $100 million over its life to municipal tax revenues, uh, you know, millions of dollars to local landowners. It's a project that, uh, you know, has a, you know, really meaningful envir- positive environmental impact but also a really uh, important and meaningful economic impact as well. You talked about this project in terms of the jobs and whatnot. Uh, what's the value of this project? It's about a, it's about a seven hundred million dollar project. Wow! So uh, you know, it's, yeah, and this is a, you know, it's a seven hundred million dollar uh, project. Uh, our investor in the project is uh, a renewable energy fund called Copenhagen Infrastructure Partners. They're the largest. Uh, renewable energy focused infrastructure fund in the world. Uh, this is going to be their first uh, investment in Canada and, uh, you know, one of the largest developments in solar that they've uh, done anywhere in the world. Copenhagen is a hard nosed organization that knows the situation for solar worldwide. So, how significant is it that they are investing such a large amount of money in Alberta, Canada? Yeah, I mean, you, you know, um, investors like CIP have a, have a global view and are pursuing projects all over the world. Uh, you know, for them to come in, uh, you know, a top-notch uh, investor to come in and make, uh, you know, a $700 million investment in Alberta, I think is a great signal. It, you know, demonstrates that, you know, that uh, to the world that, you know, Alberta is a, 
you know, great place to do business. We, you know, we have it validated by, you know, one of the top investors uh, in the space in the world. And I think it should show, uh, you know, Albertans and uh, our leadership that this is a, this is an industry that has tremendous opportunity uh, in Alberta and one that we should uh, fully embrace. Dan, we may get to that more of that in a minute. Uh, this project, though, when you started this project, I remember it being categorized as a 400 megawatt project, is now 465. Uh, what led to this uh, to the project actually getting larger as it's being developed? Yeah, so you know, as we continued to study the area and uh, and uh, you know looked at uh, you know land base and uh, you know our our ability to connect into the grid and all those various. Uh, things, uh, you know, we'd optimize, we've optimized the project, increased its size, you know, if, uh, to give you an idea of how quickly solar mod, solar technology is uh, improving, you know, over the period of time uh, that we've been developing this project, solar modules uh, have increased in size, and now we can develop, you know, the same size project with, you know, fewer panels, uh, you know, and it's, uh, you know, it's a pretty substantial reduction. So, um, you know, all, and, uh, you know, so all that kind of thrown in is, uh, you know, um, come up with our optimal design right now, which is, uh, which is the 465 megawatt project we're talking about. Dan, just to underline how dramatic this story is about a solar boom in Alberta, I was rather stunned when I looked at the numbers for the solar that's actually on the grid right now in Alberta. And as of today, there's only 20 megawatts. That's a tiny fraction of the scale of your one project on the grid today. Uh, does this make, uh, this must make what's about to happen look pretty dramatic. How dramatic is it? Well, I think it's I think it's a game changing, narrative changing uh, project. I think it uh, is going to prove that, you know, the mega scale projects we're seeing uh, elsewhere in the world can work right here in Canada, right here in Alberta, right you know, right here in the heart of oil country. And uh, yeah, no, I think it I think it's very dramatic, and I think it should be eye opening, um, and um, you know, should really hopefully encourage some, uh, some change of attitudes, um, you know, here in Alberta and, uh, and outside our borders about uh, the renewable energy opportunities that exist uh, in today's uh, energy system. So you, as I said, you were just one project that's actually going ahead that we know about. Are we in the eye of a solar storm in Alberta? And I mean storm in a very positive sense. Yeah, I mean, I certainly think we are. Uh, you know, like you said, we have uh, relatively little solar on the grid today. Uh, we're poised to have uh, a lot more uh, in the very near future. And absolutely, I think uh, the next decade is going to see a solar boom uh, here in Alberta and is going to put a lot of our skilled laborers to work uh, and is going to create a ton of uh, economic activity in this province and also uh, help to significantly improve our environmental performance at a time where, uh, you know, we're under a lot of scrutiny. A lot of people might find this very surprising, but why is Alberta, what are the conditions that make it ideal for solar development in Alberta right now today? Yeah, so, you know, so I mentioned that we've got a great solar resource, uh, you know, phenomenal solar resource. Anybody who, li you know, lives here in Alberta knows that we've got, uh, you know, tremendous amount of sunshine, which is, which is great uh, for producing solar. Uh, we also have uh, Canada's only deregulated power generation market. Um, and so that enables um, uh, projects to proceed strictly on market-based uh, fundamentals, uh, as opposed to being uh, dictated by the pace of a you know provincially owned utility. So uh, you know much more competitive market. And we have uh, carbon pricing. Uh, we have uh, carbon pricing that our large emitters are, are subject to, subject to. Uh, we are on a per capita basis the largest uh, CO2 emitters in Alberta and Canada, and uh, uh, you know, with our uh, industrial carbon pricing, it's driving those emitters uh, to improve their environmental performance and the way our program set up under what's called the TIER program, the Technology Innovation Emission Reduction Program. It allows the offsets that are generated by renewables to be used by the large emitters to comply under the regulation. And it's, uh, it's just the market working, the market working, the resources are there, the technology is there. Um, and all the ingredients are, are there for uh, you know, massive growth in this industry. 
There's actually a number of ways, you know, if the average person thought about it, they might think, okay, you build a solar farm, you sell electricity to the grid, boom, you're done. That's the business. But as you just alluded, there are actually a number of ways uh, solar developers such as yourself can actually make good money uh, by developing solar. What are the, the most important ways of making money by developing solar? Well, I think, you know, what we're seeing is, a, you know, really um, a growing trend uh, towards what's called corporate renewable procurement. So, you know, the key ingredient for a renewable energy project to, to uh, go ahead is to have some type of long-term um, uh, power purchase agreement, you know, where you have a buyer that commits to buy the power from the project on a long-term basis at fixed prices. You know, that really unlocks low-cost financing uh, for these projects. Typically, that's been governments uh, that have been playing that role. But more and more, we're seeing large corporates um, that have all made very public commitments to source 100% of their energy from renewable sources. And now some of, the, some of those same companies are even going farther and saying they want to be completely net zero. Some are saying they even want to be uh, you know, carbon negative or, you know, or net zero to the inception of their company. So the, uh, you know, the renewable targets around, among large corporates are really uh, becoming more and more aggressive. And Alberta is a great place for corporates to uh, to meet their uh, renewable energy objectives. And when I'm talking about corporates, I'm talking about you know some of the world's uh, largest companies that are procuring renewables today in the United States, and uh, you know possibly looking in Canada. You know, folks like Microsoft, Google, uh, Facebook, Apple, Amazon. Uh, you know, some of the large emitters. Uh, you know, large oil and gas companies. It's a pretty wide range of corporates that are now looking to you know, green their uh, operations through renewables. And I think uh, a lot of that is going, to, a lot of growth in Alberta is going to come from that in the near term. Well, in fact, we're starting to see that emerge as a factor in the Alberta market, aren't we? Because there are a number of procurement processes we know about. Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, there's some, uh, you know, there's currently some uh, government procurement uh, processes uh, under the way where the, you know, the federal government is looking to green, you know, their infrastructure with renewables that are sourced, uh, Right here in Alberta, there was a you know, recent deal announced by a major Canadian bank uh, that's procuring solar energy, uh, you know, from a from a project here in Alberta. So, you know, we're starting to see it, and yeah, like you said, it's uh, it's happening. How is uh, carbon pricing factor in in terms of uh, the economics of developing solar? How important can, can that be? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, carbon pricing is is really important. Uh, it does send a market signal that, uh, you know, there's a cost associated with, uh, with emissions and there's a, um, you know, uh, monetization of the benefit associated with non-emitting power. And it does, uh, you know, is an important part of the, uh, the financial model and the, uh, you know, the underpinning, under, underlying economics of the project. It's funny, Dan, when I looked at the numbers for the number of uh, solar projects in the queue in Alberta, and we already talked about how the utility scale solar is very small at 20 megawatts and is about to explode. Uh, but there's another segment that the really cool thing about solar is that it works at a variety of scales. And I was also equally as astonished to learn that in Alberta today, we already have 88 megawatts of small solar, people putting it on their homes and businesses. What, what does this say? Well, I think solar is, uh, you know, uh, ultimate uh, democratization of energy. Uh, you know, they're, they're, it, it, like you said, it's systems that can be deployed at a very small scale on, a, you know, the rooftop of a home uh, or in a larger scale on the rooftop of a, you know, of a large industrial building, you know, to, uh, you know, the mega projects that uh, Greengate's developing, like Traverse Solar, which is, you know, spread over, you know, thousands of acres of, of land. You know, it's a technology that's really easy to deploy, uh, scalable, and I think is going to see, uh, you know, a variety of use cases uh, in the years to come. Dan, I know uh, you came from the oil industry and you're very familiar with Alberta's refrain, which is as old as the hills, and that is how do we diversify our economy? Uh, and uh, how does this fit into that old refrain? Well, you know, we're, we, you know, we're going through, uh, through an energy transition um, and uh, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, you know, we, we're going to continue to, you know, require oil and gas resources for the foreseeable future, but there seems to be an acceleration uh, towards, you know, these new uh, technologies. And, uh, you know, I just think it's so insane that we keep on, you know, doubling down on the same old things and looking for the next big thing. Uh, when it's right in front of us and it's happening. You know, there is, you know, renewable energy 
uh, massive renewable energy opportunity here in Alberta. Uh, I think it's been framed in a very adversarial way and unnecessarily so. It's been framed as oil and gas versus renewables, uh, but I think it's an and. I think we can be developing our oil and gas and renewable energy resources, and I think it is vital that uh, we, can, we have an eye to the future uh, to ensure that we can remain uh, prosperous and relevant uh, for years to come. Yeah, you hear a lot of that, uh, certainly in the social media, that sort of thing, oil versus renewables. Uh, but that really doesn't hold true when you get to the ground, because some of the bigger investors in these technologies are starting to be those very energy companies. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, energy is energy. It comes, you know, from various different sources. Um, you know, some uh, oil and gas companies see themselves as oil and gas companies. Uh, some oil and gas companies truly see themselves as energy companies. And those that see themselves as energy companies uh, are, are, you know, are seeing the writing on the wall and are moving, you know, very aggressively um, into renewable energy investments. For example, BP you know, one of the uh, world's uh, largest global oil and gas producers has announced that going forward, the majority of their capital spending will be on renewable energy. Um, you know, Shell's made some, you know, some very uh, big moves into renewables. Uh, you know, domestically here, Suncor has been active in renewables for, uh, you know, for quite a while. You know, so we are seeing it, but um, uh, I, I think uh, it's something that we need to uh, uh, embrace more widely than we have. Uh, I think there's been... Uh, Unnecessary resistance uh, to uh, to the change, uh, maybe maybe some denial uh, about the way the world is headed. But uh, you know what? I think it's time for Alberta to stop whining and for us to uh, really embrace the future because we have a lot of great things going for us. We're you know one of the most innovative places in the world, one of the most entrepreneurial places in the world. And uh, if we set our minds to uh, taking on a challenge there's no challenge that we can't overcome. So uh, let's get on with it. I think the other factor, Dan, we should look at is how capital is moving around the world. Uh, and you know, you've said the conditions are great for solar here, the economics of solar are great, the market is great. Uh, and then if we do wanna build a future economy, I, I think what I hear you saying is uh, we will ride out oil and gas because for quite a few years, because there will be a market for those materials for quite some time. But if Absolutely. we want to have a future economy, if you look at the international trends, I think Bloomberg says that 77% of all future investment globally will be in renewable energy. Why do we have to pay attention to those trends? And why is that important if we want to diversify? Uh, because if we don't, we're going to be left behind. Um, you know, uh, like you said, oil is going to continue to, oil and gas are going to continue to be used uh, for the foreseeable future. But, um, you know, the, uh, the, the, the growth in, in renewables in the clean energy sector is phenomenal. And, uh, uh, we do not want to be left behind. I think Alberta is a you know very prosperous place. We have uh, one of the highest uh, standards of living anywhere in the world, and uh, I want to I want to I want to ensure that uh, my kids and my grandkids and you know beyond that can enjoy the same the same things uh, for generations to come. Do we not also have uh, some of the key resources, human resources, to pull this off as well? I mean, it, when I think about all those towers in Calgary, they're full of engineers who totally understand energy. Are they not exactly the people that are keen to develop this stuff? Yeah, no, absolutely. We, you know, we have uh, we have a ton of skilled uh, skilled labor and, and uh, tremendous engineers. Uh, you know, here in Alberta, uh, you know, we we. We've uh, been growing the oil and gas sector for decades and shown tremendous innovation in the oil and gas sector and have been able to, you know, extract oil from sand and, you know, uh, you know, drill in you know, some really deep, uh, deep locations that seemed unfathomable, you know, decades ago. You know, we've shown tremendous innovation in our fossil fuel uh, uh, sector. And I think uh, that same type of innovation can be easily transferred uh, to clean energy. We have the people, we have uh, the educated workforce and, uh, we have the uh, open for business attitude. So I think, uh, you know, we're really, really primed to take advantage of this opportunity if we can embrace it and recognize it. Dan, I'm looking to you to uh, sum up the top five factors in why Alberta is the perfect place for solar in the world. We know the solar boom's happening. I mean, there's no other way to describe the numbers. Uh, so again, summarize for me the, the top four or five reasons why Alberta is literally the perfect place for this to happen. 
I'll try to come up with five. Great resource, um, deregulated power generation market, very robust carbon pricing, great people, and an open for business attitude. Okay, well, that's great and very concise as well. How do we turn the conversation into one in which Alberta respects traditional energy? I mean, if you think about George Marshall, who was here a number of years ago, he talked about how, uh, you know, how you turn these dialogues around. And one of the ways he said is you got to stop going at each other and you got to respect your heritage. And our heritage here is oil and gas. Uh, and so how do we get that conversation to the point where there's respect for that, uh, but then we go all out and take advantage of these new opportunities? Well, I think we all need to, uh, we all need to try to put each other uh, in each other's shoes, right? So, you know, from, uh, you know, from the environmentalist perspective, um, you know, there, you know, there, there's, uh, you know, some voices that are calling for the shutdown of, uh, you know, the Canadian oil and gas sector. And, you know, that's not going to promote uh, dialogue. I think there needs to be some understanding of uh, the reality. You know, we can't technically, it's not technically feasible to simply shut off the taps. It's not going to happen. We, we, do, we don't have the ability to transition our energy system overnight. This is something that's going to take time. I think we need to recognize uh, how much wealth uh, has been created in the oil and gas sector and how much that's contributed to the general, uh, you know, quality of life. Uh, across the board, and we need to have compassion for the workers in that industry. Um, you know who um, you know. There's been tremendous layoffs in uh, you know in the oil and gas industry over the last number of years, and we need to have compassion for those people. They're you know human beings with families, and um, yeah. So we we need to have an understanding of that side. And then you know then on the you know the side of uh, those in the you know the oil and gas camp, you know um, we need to understand that renewable energy is not a you know a direct threat to, uh, you know, to, to what you're doing today. Um, you know, it's uh, an evolution that's going to take time, uh, but we need to be aware of, you know, the trends that are going on in the world. Uh, you know, denying those trends is not going to change the outcome. These things are happening and uh, yeah, and we need to embrace it. And uh, like I said, let's get on with it because if, uh, if any place in the world can figure this out, it's Alberta. Dan, uh, we touched on this a little bit, but talk about how the expertise we have in Alberta, both technical and in terms of the, all those little service industries for the oil industry, how, how we're well positioned, uh, how much of that can be repurposed and re-engaged in, uh, in, in this boom? I mean, there's a ton, there's a ton that, uh, you know, that can be repurposed, um, you know, from the, uh, you know, the, uh, the lawyers, the bankers, the uh, engineers, you know, the land people. Uh, the, uh, you know, and then getting down to, to the workers. I mean, these are massive construction projects, uh, you know, that require all sorts of, uh, you know, various forms of, uh, of skilled labor uh, to, to execute them. Uh, and we have lots of that skilled labor, uh, labor today, lots of it that's, that's unfortunately idle today in the province. And, uh, you know, that can very easily uh, be moved into, um, into renewables. Dan, you have a lot of projects in the works. So not only are you building the largest solar project uh, in Canadian history by quite a significant margin, you have other projects in the works. Can you give me a very concise, quick rundown of those projects? Yeah, so, uh, you know, like I said, this year, we expect to start construction on uh, Canada's largest solar project. Uh, we have a number of uh, utility scale, you know, multi-hundred million dollar uh, wind projects uh, in the works. And uh, uh, and we have some uh, some more surprises uh, in store ahead as we you know continue to you know what we what we like to do is we like to take on the most ambitious uh, uh, projects around and uh, we continue we uh, plan to continue doing so in Alberta and beyond. That's great, Dan. Can you do it again and just give me a list of the? I think you have about five big active projects, and then you can still allude to more at the end. Uh, name them and, and their capacities. Just make give me a list of them. What you have in the works? Yeah. So uh, you know we're currently working on the 465 megawatt Traverse Solar Project. Uh, we're working on uh, three wind projects: uh, 113 megawatt Sterling Wind Project, 120 megawatt Wheatland Wind Project, 150 megawatt Paint Earth Wind Project. All of those uh, were partners with uh, Potentia Renewables. Uh, we have an additional uh, solar project, 120 megawatt uh, solar project called Latham Solar. And uh, like I said, more tricks up our sleeve beyond that. 
Well, thanks, Dan. Uh, good luck with your projects. This really is a fascinating story. And uh, I really hope this stops being the, the quiet story that nobody hears about, because it, it's pretty good news at a time when we have so many crappy news stories out there. There's nothing but bad news. And this is a story about jobs, opportunity, and the future, which, you know, people need this story. Absolutely. I mean, Mark Carney said, uh, energy transition is the greatest commercial opportunity of our generation. And, uh, and I agree. And Alberta is extremely well positioned uh, to take advantage of that if we can embrace the change. Thanks, Dan. And thanks for taking the time. Thank you very much, David.